Hey, welcome to Mr. Otter Studio. I posted a how to make a tessellation video a few weeks ago, and today I thought I would show you some really quick tips and tricks for making tessellations. In the video I didn't talk much, and so today I thought I'd just share some tips and tricks and ideas for these tessellations. The artist I would definitely look at is MC Escher. These can be really, really fun, but they are a little bit mathematical, and so there are a few things that I wanna share with you that will make them a little bit easier to make. The supplies you need for a tessellation is paper, a pencil, scissors, tape, and then another piece of paper to draw your tessellation onto. And then you can design it and color it in with whatever you want, with markers, colored pencils, watercolor. Tip number one, use sticky notes to make each shape of your tessellation. Another tip, to keep it from moving around, just take some tape, roll it up like so, stick it on the back, and then as you're tracing it, that tape is going to keep it where you want it to be. This definitely makes it a lot easier. Also, how do you choose the right size? If I made a tessellation this size, I probably couldn't even fit two on this paper, right? Because the tessellation is gonna come out this way, it's gonna come out this way, so I'm not gonna be able to fit it. So think about the size of your paper you're transferring it onto, and just take that square, whatever size, and just make sure you, know, you can fit three across, and maybe three this way, or at least two. And then you're going to be able to fit at least four of your shapes in your tessellation on that paper. This is a six by six inch piece of paper, and then the tessellation ends up being about nine inches. So for smaller hands, these little tessellations are not as easy. If you're working with children, or if you are working with people with special needs, you might wanna make these bigger. Number one for decorating, number two for cutting, and it's just a lot easier for their little hands to trace and get around. Tip number two is how to line up your different pieces. So let's say I'm doing a tessellation and I have this circular shape here, and then I have this shape right here. Cut out your shapes, and then you're trying to move this one across from itself, and then this one is going to go across vertically. So this one's moving horizontally, this one's moving vertically. So how do we make sure that this is in the right space? Because right, I could move this around on this and it makes it a little bit hard to figure out where exactly to put it. One way to make sure that you're putting it in the same place is to choose one of these sides and it's easiest if you choose one that's not like rounded but if it comes into a nice angle like this and all you do is just take your piece of paper, don't fold it but just kind of bend it around and match it up on that side. And then you can make like a little mark where that touches. And then you know that this piece needs to end right there. And that is going to put it in the exact same spot that it was on the other side. Same thing with this top piece. Fig trying to figure out where it goes here. Like, does it move this way? Does it move that way? Well, what you can do is just take this side or that side. I'm gonna use this side because it looks easier to kind of get over there. Line it up, make a little pencil mark where it ends on that. And then you know that your piece needs to line up with that line. So now it's going to be in the exact same place up here that it was below. This is going to be a much better puzzle piece because these pieces will fit together much more nicely. Another tip is if it's not matching up exactly, just try to make sure that you can fit this line underneath and above. You might have to smudge it just a little bit to make sure that those work. If you are making these with younger children, you might want to make these out of cardstock because then it's a little bit easier for them to trace and they're not going to bend and be as flimsy as just a normal piece of paper. Here are some ideas for tessellations. There's so many cool things you can do with this. One thing that I think would be awesome is if you did a group collaboration where each person had a piece of the tessellation and they designed it with whatever they could choose patterns. They could even choose like a a topic or a theme that is going to go onto that shape and then each of them can decorate their own but then at the end everyone takes their pieces and puts it together into a huge collaboration. It would just be a really fun collaborative project. Also for younger children that might be a really fun way for them to understand what a tessellation is and also the larger the pieces and how they can decorate it will be a little bit easier for their small hands. This is an example of learning how to mix watercolors using tessellations. So in each piece of the tessellation, we've just added a little bit more of a color to the original color. Also flip it on a diagonal. You don't have to put these in a square shape. When you put them on your paper, you can hook these tessellations together however you want. And on a diagonal, I've never tried to hook these this way, but I'm sure you could as long as it matches up. Maybe you could use a rectangle instead of a square. So those are some really just quick tips, tricks, and ideas. Some different ideas you can bring into this are optical illusions, pattern, puzzles, repetition, 
And also talk about the artists that use this. Talk about textiles. Talk about design, graphic design. Thank you so much for joining me on Mr. Otter's studio. I hope you have a wonderful day. We would love to see some of the tessellations that you've created. Post your images to Instagram or Facebook using hashtag Mr. Otter Art Studio or Mr. Otter Studio and have a wonderful day. Yeah.